So me and my brother put together a um, water-cooled induction annealer and we started out just to make something for ourselves but um, decided to maybe try to post up a build video in case anybody else wants to build one and then put the files on printable. So just thought I'd go through a little and um, maybe do a little step-by-step -step of how everything goes together. This is definitely not um, an original idea. The hot rod units have been used for a while, it looks like, for annealing brass. Um, I think maybe Northeast Texas Tactical is the first place I've seen it on YouTube. Um, you've got some good videos on that and also on how to uh, make coils and whatnot in his second video. So, and then the water cooled system, I stole a lot of the ideas on that from the Jenna Eric um, post on Accurate Shooter. Um, so, as far as power supply, we put a plug on the back, standard um, computer plug or charger plug, whatever, and then just cut the cord off of the back of the heater here and just tied it into these Wago fittings. And then this 12 volt, this is a 12 volt power supply, it just ties into the white and black wire here and it's basically just teeing in to power and then the um, 12 volt runs through the bottom of here up to um, five gang Wago fittings and then these this looks kind of complicated but all this is is um, positive and negative for each of the components the timer has power the fan on the radiator the fan um, the main fan and then the water pump so those just all plug in, everything plugs into there. And then on this, the way it is controlled, the timer, this timer system, is hooked into what was originally the power button on this unit. I just soldered some wires onto here, run it into the back. It essentially runs into the back of here, but we pulled the, the the switch from that was originally here and put it in the front here, and then this just tees from the timer and from the switch into here, and then we just ran the wire from the original switch into these Wago fittings so that you can override and have a manual on off by just pushing this red button for setting up your timer and whatnot. It gives you just uh, a way to use it without having to program the time. So as far as wiring, it's, yeah, it's not too complicated. It looks a little messy, but I had all these wires short at one point and to just disassemble this thing and have it laying here. You can't have the wires all too organized. And then on the water system, it's quite simple. This There's a printed piece that this um, uh, pump screws to, and then it screws down. Um, if I can get this to focus. It screws down to four screws here so that you don't have to try to mount that. Um, you can kind of build that all up off of there. Probably the hardest part to do on this whole build is this coil. So this is, um, these are just T's from like a hardware store. And we soldered, just soldered, I think it's 10 gauge wire to the back of them. Um, and then we tried a bunch of different methods for how to get this water to hook up. And I think if you buy a specialty T of some sort, you might be able to get it to work, but we tried a bunch of stuff and then kind of gave up on it. What worked seemed to work the best was to just use gasket, some gasket maker, and um, so I just gunked them, them threads up good, and then slid them lines on, and let it set overnight, and then hose clamped it, and that seems to seal really well. I haven't had any issues with leaking or anything on that. Uh, so, yeah, I'd be 
open to other ideas on that part of it. I, I We tried a whole bunch of stuff and couldn't get it to work. And that seemed to be affordable and work well. So, uh, yeah. I think you could maybe do a 90 um, with a 3 8 barb and then just solder onto the 90, but I'm not sure on that. And then on the coil, we did I did roughly a 5 8 coil. Um, full... I think it'd be like four and a half wraps, so it'd be five five wraps on the outside. Um, seemed like a good a good time. It takes about three seconds to anneal three oh eight or six five uh brass. So yeah, I'll maybe do a little more um video here with it running. Just to give you an impression how it all works. This, so this dropper is um, fairly easy to disassemble. If you overheat something, we haven't had any issues with um, anything melting in a normal run situation. But obviously, if you just sit here and nail a case till it's red hot all the way down, it's going to melt pieces on this. But it's fairly easy to reprint if that happens, and through normal use, it should should function quite well. So I thought I'd go through and show how this sets up just a bit. So you want P4 um, for the settings. There's different if you hold the setting button there's different uh, modes. Um, not even sure how many there is. Looks like nine of them. So you want P4 and then on the open is when the unit's running. So you set that to your time of anneal and the power button sets the increments of time. So you could set it to like there it's at 31 seconds, now it's at 3.1 and then you want your close set to whatever you whatever you feel like is a good time. I have mine set at five seconds now, and I like to set the closed to a exact second, and so that the top clock is moving slower when you're in the off mode and faster when it's in the annealing mode. It's just kind of a I don't know. Uh, it helps for you to kind of visually see when the annealer's running and when it's not. And then on the loop, you want to set the loop to, uh, obviously you can set it to however many loops you want. You want it to just uh, set to infinity or whatever that would be, so that it doesn't ever shut off. And, um, oh, the reason you want to set it to P4 is it will naturally be off when it stops, or like when you plug it in, it won't be annealing. If you set it to P5, which is the same function, it just starts on instead of off. Um, I think it's it's all quite simple, and then you just hold the setting button uh, until everything goes back, and yeah, you just drop your case in. I always start with a case in. You don't have to. You can let it run with without a case in it. It doesn't hurt anything. But start with the case in. Hit the power button to start, and it anneals, and then you run the loop dropper. Uh, put another case in and that hole we've got um, in there lets you see that light that's another reason another thing that helps you um, see getting distracted here not keeping up these cases have been annealed a whole bunch of times already as testing cases so that's why they're smoking like that and whatnot I've got a whole bunch of stuff burned out of them obviously